Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show an adventure, comedy, and family film called, The Witches. Spoilers, spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Luke Evesham is a brave and precocious eight-year-old boy visiting his grandmother, Helga, in Norway, together with his parents. Helga is a loving and doting grandmother to Luke, sharing with him stories about her childhood. On one particular night, as they make candles together, Helga tells Luke about witches. Not the green-skinned, broom-flying witches on television, but rather the real witches who dress in ordinary clothes and look like ordinary women. Every country in the world has witches and in each country they have a leader called the High Witch. But the evilest woman in creation, the leader of all the witches, is the Grand High Witch herself. Witches spend their time stalking and plotting to get rid of children. Helga shows her missing pinky finger to her grandson, a painful proof of her unpleasant encounter with a witch. She then tells Luke about her childhood friend and neighbor, Erica, who was taken by a witch. Even though Erica had very strict parents, it didn't save her, because when a witch chooses a victim, the only way to escape is to know everything about them. Real witches hate children. They have bald heads and wear itchy wigs that give them scalp rash. They look hideous behind their human masks and they have no toes and wear plain shoes to cover their square-ended feet. The only way to distinguish them from real people is to look for the purple tinge in their eyes. Unfortunately, little Erica didn't know about these things. When she was sent to Larson's to buy a liter of milk, she never came back home. Everyone in the town searched for miles around but she had completely disappeared. Young Helga visited Erica's parents six weeks later. When Erica's father entered the room, he looked as if he had seen a ghost, for there in his painting, as if it always had been there, was little Erica, locked in the painting, gazing at them. Through the years, the girl in the painting moved. One day she'd be feeding the ducks and the next day she'd be inside the farmhouse. The girl grew older too and until six years ago, the old woman that Erica had become disappeared completely. As Helga tucks Luke into bed, his parents enter the room and Anne tells him goodbye, before they attend a dinner party. Luke begs his grandmother to tell him one more story. Helga then tells him about witches and their highly developed sense of smell. They could smell a clean child from miles away. If a child is dirty, it's the dirt they smell, but if the child is clean, they smell like fresh dogs droppings to witches. Helga warns him that if he ever sees a woman holds her nose as she passes by him she could probably well be a witch. She then kisses him goodnight and turns off the light. When Luke wakes up the next morning, he finds his parents' bedroom empty. A police car drives up to the house and the officers inform Helga that Luke's parents had died from a terrible accident. Luke joins his crying grandmother in the living room and they hold each other in a sad embrace. After the accident, Luke moves to England with his grandmother where she has a big house and garden. He attends school and plays in his treehouse, just like any other child. One afternoon, Luke is up playing in his treehouse when a woman in a black coat dress approaches him. She tries to make him come down, tempting him to pet her snake, but Luke sees the purple tinge in her eyes. It's a witch. He starts yelling for his grandmother, but the witch wouldn't leave him alone. She offers him a bar of chocolate and sneers at him, telling him that his grandmother can't hear him. She calls him by his name and this frightens Luke, who climbs higher up the tree. Suddenly, Helga calls out for his grandson, looking for him. The witch stops in her tracks and walks away, shooting glares at the boy. As soon as she's gone, the snake she left disappears too. Luke tells his grandmother about the witch and Helga tells him that she believes him. On Luke's ninth birthday, Helga gives him two pet rats whom Luke names as William and Mary. Helga faints during the celebrations and they bring in a doctor. The doctor informs Luke that his grandmother has a mild case of diabetes so she should stay away from sweets, drink her medicine, and get some rest, recommending a seaside vacation to do her some good. Helga apologizes to her grandson for ruining his birthday but he doesn't mind. The next day, Luke and his grandmother travel to a big hotel near the ocean for their vacation. After they check into their rooms, a very tall and striking woman enters the lobby. It's Miss Eva Ernst, the chairwoman hosting the Fifth National Convention for the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. The women in the room gasp in excitement at the sight of her. She meets the owner of the hotel, Mr. Stringer, a beanpole of a man, and refers him to her secretary, Miss Irvine. As Miss Ernst goes up to her room, she spots a painting on the wall with a little child. She smirks at it and then turns away to the elevator. The little child in the painting slowly fades away. Meanwhile, Luke goes exploring on his own in the hotel. At the dining area, he meets a gluttonous but friendly boy, Bruno Jenkins. Mr. Stringer has also got his hands full when one of the maids runs out of the rooms with frantic screams and tells him about the rats she found. 
He goes to Luke's room and finds his pet rats in its cage. Helga blackmails Mr. Stringer into letting Luke keep his rats or else she'll report the hotel to the health office. The hotel owner reluctantly agrees under the strict condition that the rats must be kept in the cage at all times. Back in the dining room, Helga and Luke have come down for tea. Helga spots Miss Ernst across the room and feels that she's seen the woman from somewhere. Across the tables, Miss Ernst has spotted Helga with Luke and looks over to Bruno Jenkins's table with a sinister smile on her face and a dark gleam in her eyes. Luke and his grandmother return to their rooms. Helga rests as Luke takes out his pets and sets out to explore the hotel. He enters the banquet hall which has been temporarily transformed to accommodate the convention and plays behind one of the room separators. As Luke trains his rats, the doors to the banquet open, and in comes Miss Ernst with her group of ladies. Luke spots the tinge of purple in their eyes and is alarmed. But before he can escape, one of the ladies locks up the doors. Miss Ernst takes the stage and starts the convention. With a hall fully secured, Miss Ernst orders them to reveal their true selves. The ladies take off their shoes and gloves, revealing their stubbed feet and long claws. They toss aside their wigs and show off their bald heads full of scalp rash. Luke gasps in horror as he realizes where he is. It's a coven full of witches. Miss Ernst takes off her human mask, assisted by her mistreated assistant, and finally reveals her final form. A bald, aging, woman with large ears, pointed nose, and wrinkly, decaying, skin, the most terrible and evil of them all, Miss Ernst is the Grand High Witch. Miss Ernst berates the coven, telling them that wiping out one child a week isn't enough, and demands that every child in England must be eliminated. One witch whispers to another one telling her that it can't be possible to wipe out all of them. Unlucky for her, the Grand High Witch hears this. The other witches step away from the outspoken witch as Miss Ernst casts her horrible spell and strikes at the poor woman, wiping her out from existence. The Grand High Witch then begins telling them her master plan. She has a trunk full of money in her hotel room that she'll be giving out to these witches so that they could buy sweet shops or candy stores of their own. Once the sweet shop is in place, they will announce a big gala opening, offering free candy for every child. And mixed with this candy will be her special potion, Magic Formula Number 86. Five doses of this potion will turn any person, especially a child, into a mouse almost instantaneously. As proof that the potion works, Miss Ernst brings in Bruno, whom she lured earlier with a bar of chocolate mixed with the formula. Bruno walks into the room, unaware of the witches in their human disguises pinching their noses. He's taken to the stage and demands the six chocolate bars that Miss Ernst promised him. The Grand High Witch looks at her watch, anticipating together with the rest of the witches for the child's transformation. Bruno looks at the crowd confused and demands to know what's going on. At exactly 6.15, Bruno lets out a large belch and cradles his stomach as green smoke comes out from his mouth. His body shrinks, a tail appears behind him, and he's reduced into a tiny mouse who scutters away into the walls. The crowd celebrates and Miss Ernst gives further instructions. Before the banquet that night, the witches will come to her hotel room, room number 208, in groups of 10. She will give them each one bottle full of 500 doses and money to buy their sweet shop. As they make their way out of the room, she reminds them to bring their nose plugs because the hall will be full of filthy children. One of the witches stays behind to clean the stage when she smells Luke. She alerts the coven and they begin searching for the child. Luke runs out from his hiding spot, crawling and running his way through the crowd. He loses his glasses but he keeps on running, escaping from their claws. He runs into the dining area and pushes a table to slow them down. He then takes a chair and smashes it into the glass door and escapes through the hole. Luke jumps over the terrace railing, almost getting caught by the witch's claws, and runs towards the beach. As Luke hides amongst the tall weeds, Miss Ernst approaches a sleeping nanny and her baby in a pram. Attempting to lure him out of his hiding spot, she pushes the pram off the hill. The nanny runs after the baby screaming for help. Luke runs after the pram as well, grabbing it just in time before the baby falls off the cliff. He hands the baby back to the nanny and runs to the beach. He makes his way back to his grandmother's room but finds her deep asleep due to a dizzy spell from her diabetes. Miss Ernst appears in the room and takes the boy back to the coven. They pin him down on the table and force him to take the whole bottle of the potion. Luke is sent into a hazy state as green smoke emits from his body. He then finds himself shrunken into a mouse. The ladies start stomping on his clothes but Luke manages to escape into an air vent. Meanwhile, Helga wakes up from her sleep, sensing that something very bad has happened. In the air vent, Luke meets up with Bruno who's eating a piece of cake crumb. Even though they've been turned into mice, they can still talk. They climb up within the walls, looking for a way out. They run through the convention room and scutter through the lobby avoiding detection. 
they enter the elevator and hide under an old chip bag. Once they land on the right floor, they scamper through the doors and into the hallway, talking about how it wouldn't be so bad to be a mouse. They hide between the towels on a parked cart in the hallway when one of the maids accidentally touches them. She screams and the door to Luke's room opens. Helga inspects the commotion outside as the two mice escape into the room. She spots one of the maids with a tinge of purple in her eyes and immediately shuts the door. Luke calls out to his grandmother and she spots him by the telephone. She feels sad seeing her grandson in his state. Luke tells her about the Grand High Witch and the witch's plan to turn every kid in England into a mouse. Luke hatches up a plan with his grandmother. He's going to Miss Ernst's room, stealing a bottle of potion, and mixing it with the coven's food at the banquet hall. Helga is reluctant to let her grandson go, fearing that it's too dangerous, but Luke insists that they can't just sit and do nothing. She helps him into a piece of sock tied with a long string and lets him down gently into the balcony below them. When Luke lands, a black cat spots him. He seeks refuge in a plant as Helga distracts the cat away. With the cat busy, Luke sneaks into the Grand High Witch's room and makes his way to her dresser. At this point, Miss Ernst has finished her conversation with Mr. Jenkins and is making her way back to her room. Luke stumbles upon a fake book filled with the potions and grabs a bottle with his tail. Miss Ernst arrives at the room and looks for her cat, finding Helga with her dangling sock above her room. The witch glares at her and refers to her as a meddling old woman that she will deal with later. A knock comes from Miss Ernst's door. The other witches have arrived to collect their potion and money. Back in the hallway, Luke hides under the carpet with the bottle wrapped around his tail. He climbs up the stairs and all the way to his grandmother's room. It's time for the next phase of their plan. All they have to do now is to get to the kitchen and mix the potion with the coven's food. Helga carries the two mice in her handbag to the dining room and plans to bring Bruno back to his parents. She approaches the Jenkins at their table and tells them what happened to Bruno. But when she shows them their child, Mrs. Jenkins screams at the mouse, insisting that she's crazy. Mr. Jenkins drives Helga away or else he will call the police. Helga runs to the hallway and sees Miss Ernst and tries to avoid her. Meanwhile, an unsuspecting maid in Miss Ernst's room rubs the potion on her neck, thinking that it's perfume. Back at the dining room, the Grand High Witch leads her coven into the banquet hall. She berates Miss Irvine and sends her back to her room. Miss Irvine, sick of the mistreatment, quits her position and goes back to her quarters. She didn't want to be a witch anyway. On the other hand, Helga sneaks into the kitchen, pretending to be a lost old lady, and puts Luke into a sack of potatoes. Luke sneaks to a pot of cut potatoes and looks for a way to mix the potion with the witch's food. He overhears the head chef talking about the soup for the convention group. Luke then has an idea. He climbs up the cupboard and hides behind the spices. He notices that the cook is a witch too. Mr. Stringer comes in and orders them to prepare the soup. The cook goes away to prepare the soup tureens. With the coast clear, Luke balances himself on a ladle and dangles on the tip. He pushes the bottle, almost falling into the soup himself, but manages to drop the entire potion into the pot. He climbs back up the ladle and watches the cook come back and taste the soup. Meanwhile, Mr. Stringer spots the maid who went to Miss Ernst's room. He tries to kiss her neck but is turned off by a patch of fur. The maid inspects herself in the mirror and is shocked to see the fur. Luke's plan is a success. He jumps to a table and the chef spots him, almost cutting the tip of his tail off. The kitchen panics at the sight of the mouse and Luke quickly climbs up the head chef's pants. The staff helps the chef take off his pants and Luke escapes amidst the commotion. Meanwhile, the cook who tasted the soup is feeling squeamish and knows something's wrong. She runs to the pantry as green smoke blows out from her body. She shrinks into a mouse and scampers into the banquet hall, warning the Grand High Witch to not eat the soup. Miss Ernst spots the mouse, but not knowing that it's her associate, she squashes it with her foot. It's too late now. The kitchen is now serving the soup. Helga takes this as her cue and provides a distraction by breaking her glasses. Mr. Stringer comes along and insists that he will be the one to clean it up. Luke goes into a pan and broom just in time as Mr. Stringer gets it to clean the mess outside. Now at his grandmother's table, Luke slips out and into Helga's bag. Across the room, all the witches eat the soup, even the Grand High Witch, unaware of the potion mixed into their meal. Suddenly, Helga spots Mr. Jenkins who's about to eat the same soup too. She runs to their table and spills the soup. She hands them Bruno, who talks to them, telling them that he's their son. Mrs. Jenkins faints as his husband looks at his son. Meanwhile, at the coven's table, Miss Ernst stands in shock as her ladies begin transforming into mice. Helga points at her and declares her as the Grand High Witch, telling Bruno's parents that it's all her fault. As Miss Ernst dooms Helga, Bruno jumps into her chest and bites her. 
Green smoke comes out from Miss Ernst's mouth as her human disguise falls off her face. The hall is in total havoc now. The kitchen staff has emerged with brooms and knives, killing any mouse in sight. At this point, Miss Irvine arrives at the hall to see the commotion and she doesn't know whether to be shocked or delighted to see what has become of her former group. Helga faces the Grand High Witch, backing her up to a corner, now a hairless filthy rat. She traps the witch under a glass. She calls for Mr. Stringer and points him to Miss Ernst, referring to her as a particularly infectious rat. He finds the Grand High Witch under the glass, opens it, and cuts her open with a chopping knife, putting an end to the evilest and terrible woman in the world. Helga finally hands Bruno back to his parents, who have now accepted their son's furry fate. Luke bids goodbye to Bruno as they go back to their room and pack their things. Before they leave, Luke asks his grandmother to write a tag with their name and address on it. After that, they quickly bring their things and load them into a taxi. As the car drives away from the hotel, Miss Irvine stands by one of the windows and watches them leave, thankful for setting her free from a horrible destiny. Back at their home, a large trunk is delivered to Helga. She opens it and finds it filled with money to the brim. It was the money from Miss Ernst's hotel room. It turns out Luke replaced the tag on the trunk and had it delivered to them. He tells his grandmother that they could use the money to go to America to stop all the witches in the country. As they settle in for the night, Helga feels sad that her grandson is still a mouse, even though Luke reassures her that he doesn't mind it very much. Unbeknownst to them, Miss Irvine has just driven up their driveway. She gets out of her car, points her finger at the house, and casts her spell. A bright light appears in the room, waking Helga up as she watches Luke transform back into a little boy. She also gives back to Luke his glasses and his pet rats, William and Mary. Delighted at the turn of events, they run to the window and wave to Miss Irvine. Luke cries out to her, telling her to not forget about Bruno. Miss Irvine waves back at them, feeling good about becoming a good witch. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.